Hey guys, James here, uh, back with some new comic book reviews. Uh, this is going to be a part one of two. Um, got a lot of stuff to go over um, with the comics this week, and um, we're going to do two episodes or two, two small videos. <coughs> First, I want to start off by talking about uh, He Man Masters of the Universe, which was a uh, title that came out last week. Uh, I just read something on the, the DC blog, DC Comics blog, that um, they're changing writers for issue two. So issue two won't be out till September 5th. And instead of James Robinson, who was the writer of issue one, um, who I um, thought did an excellent job, I really liked it. All the reviews I've seen have been positive. Um, we're now going to have Keith Giffen, um, who would, I would assume finish out the series, being it's a limited series to begin with. So. Um, a little piece of news there for you if you hadn't heard about that and you're a, uh, a He-Man fan or enjoyed that. So, um, I'm going to start off with, um, for this week, The Massive, um, issue one here, which was last month. Here's issue two. So... Why am I showing you issue one? Well, I kind of had to go back and read this. this. This book is so complicated because it's going over so much stuff, and there's this worldwide um, uh, environmental disaster, basically, that has just changed the face of the earth. It's changed the way governments work. It's changing um, social and economic uh, boundaries. Uh, you know, first world countries are becoming third world countries. Uh, there's pirates on the seas. Uh, where there used to be oceans, there's deserts, and where there used to be deserts, there's oceans. So, so much change uh, that it takes a lot of setup. <clears throat> uh, Brian Wood writes this, um, who I really like. Um, three main characters of this are uh, Israel, Callum, uh, Mag, and Mary. They're aboard a ship called the Capital, um, and they're searching for their sister ship. Uh, the mass. They are a environmentalist group um, I think called Length Wave that have basically been doing um, <clears throat> the pseudo terrorist environmentalists. So, like, they would blow up whaling ships and things like that. First issue, uh, you know, kind of explaining the disaster that's happened, and they're searching for the massive, and some pirates uh, try to attack their boat. So, Mary takes off in a uh, a small like little speedboat to try to distract the pirates before they get to the capital because they don't have any weapons really. They don't. Um, Israel Callum doesn't believe in violence, even though in the past he's been more militant uh, with some of the things they've done. So they're chasing them, kind of get away. Mary um, has turned off her radio, so. The capital, the, the fleet ship, is in fog, hidden. And um, so Mary doesn't know where the capital is now. She's on this little boat in the middle of uh, the Bering Sea. <clears throat> so in this issue, um, you kind of see Mary is going towards um, Alaska, uh, crossing into American territory. Uh, and I assume it's flashing back to... Uh, when the capital was in Hong Kong before they get to the Bering Sea. Um, and why I say I assume it's a flashback because it really doesn't show the timeline hasn't played out yet. This is part two or three, I would assume, and part three you kind of see, okay, yes, this was a flashback or a flash forward. I think it has to be a flashback just the way the story is going. Um, the capital is, um, they think they found the masses, they're going towards it. Uh, ends up not being. In the flashbacks to Hong Kong, you see that Hong Kong has uh, fallen about 100 feet. Uh, and so the major part of the city is under 100 feet of water. Now there's a lot of it still above water because of the skyscrapers and whatnot. They've basically just been building a, a, <coughs> a shanty town around uh, you know these surviving parts of the buildings. Uh, they've been robbed in Hong Kong. All kinds of things. So um, this I could do uh, just such a long review on because it's so much that you can talk about. Um, I'm going to cut a little bit short. 
Uh, I suggest uh, picking these up. I think that um, Ron Wood writing this is going to be a really good series. It's still it's setting up a lot. Um, you guys know I'm not very patient with setup, but uh, there's enough action in here to keep me uh, interested. And the, the way the world is changing, uh, environmentally, uh, the post-apocalyptic feel to it, um, I really enjoy it. So uh, I, I suggest it uh, at least to pick it up and see if it's something that uh, you're into. So. Next, I'm going to go to Smoke and Mirrors, Issue 4. This was something I was going to drop, but um, it's a mini-series. It's an Issue 4, 4 or 5, so you know, I'm going to finish it out. Um, I'm glad I did. Uh, this issue right here, um, things are starting to move along. Uh, you have this guy right here who is basically a evil magician. is um, capture our main character, has him... Um, walked away and is trying to figure out what his secret is, um, which of course the secret is the whole time. He's in a world that everything works by magic and this guy uses sleight of hand and they can't figure out how he performs his magic because he's not really using magic. So it's a really interesting story. There's always an essay in the back of it that's very interesting as well. Um, I would wait for it to come out and trade um, at this point. But um, mediocre title. Good issue. Next, we'll go back to another uh, Brian Wood book. This is um, Dark Horse, uh, Conan the Barbarian, Brian Wood. Um, the art's by James Heron and uh, Dave Stewart. We're going back to Becky Krugan, um, the next issue, which is a good thing because her art in the first few issues was really what got me into this, uh, and Brian Wood's story has kept me there. So the art in this, uh, there's some sprawling city views that are really cool. Uh, other than that, I'm not particularly a fan of the way they draw Conan in this. The way Becky Klugan does it, though, I do like it. So I'm excited to see her back. Um, this issue uh, follows, uh, it's this third part of the Argos Deception. Conan comes, um, he's just gotten off the gallows, like he's killed the... the um, champion for the city uh, to win his freedom and of course the guards aren't having that and they're chasing him down and he's being thrown in and kicking their ass so that's awesome uh, Bullet is uh, also running they're trying to get back to their ship um, I really love the narratives in this that Brian Wood does it adds so much to the story it adds so much to the character of Conan he has uh, emotions other than drunk and angry, which is kind of the two emotions you always think of with Conan. <laughs> he, uh, he's scared, of, you know, he feels fear, uh, he feels love, uh, he uh, second guesses himself, and is, it makes him more human, but without taking away uh, his you know, being a badass, him, him, you know, being able to just hack people apart and... Uh, so it really adds to the story. So this is them trying to get back to the ship. Um, and uh, really it's just, this is, um, it's mostly just killing. Mostly Karen and just you know, messing people up and they just trip back to the ship. It's really good. Uh, kind of been waiting for this issue because uh, the last couple of issues, you know, Karen and was not looking, things were not looking good for him. And now he is, um, he's back, he's, uh, he's free again, and he's heading back towards uh, the ship. So, lots of good killing. Okay, and then the last one I'm going to do for this first video is Batman issue 11. This is the uh, end of the uh, Court of Battles, which was a fantastic story arc. Um, Yes, Scott Snyder and Greg Cooler will be back for the rest of, uh, or, or for the next story arc, uh, which is supposed to be the death of the family, uh, featuring the Joker as the villain. Um, this issue just kind of finishes off the uh, Thomas Wayne Jr. storyline. Uh, we really don't find out if it is uh, Bruce's brother or not. Uh, it's still kind of up in the air. Uh, they believe that... Uh, 
even Bruce doesn't know. He said the only way he would know is a DNA uh, test, and he doesn't have any samples of his DNA. So this whole issue is basically a battle between um, Lincoln March, um, one of the, the talents who claims to be Bruce's brother, and Batman. And it's all over Gotham. Um, it's a very cool story. Um, I mean, this is not the best Batman issue I've read, but it's what we needed to end the story. I mean, the last issue was so awesome, it's, uh, this is a little anticlimactic because you've kind of already got the big reveal, and now it's just the battle where Batman, you know, prevails and, and uh, you close out this story arc. But it was good. If, uh, if you're not reading Batman, I think you're missing out. I think this is the best title on the shelves right now. Um, it um, it's not my pick of the week this week, but uh, as a series, I think this is probably the best thing out right now. So that's it for my first uh, first video for the new comic reviews this week, and I'll be back to review the last uh, few books. See you in a few.